Hello again, welcome to Analog Output. So here you are, you've got some music you're working on, you've got maybe you've got some drum modules and you need to make some drum rhythms. Or maybe you've got like a sequencer putting out a series of control voltages, making a series of notes, but it's kind of dull if it's all just do 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 and you want to change it so it's more like a do 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 something like that. What do you do? Well, you know, maybe you use a DAW to uh, create a se pattern sequence of triggers with some particular rhythm, or if you're more the daw type, maybe you've got some sort of trigger sequencer that just puts out a series of, you know, a repeating series of triggers in some rhythmic arrangement. Well, that's the idea behind this thing, the gear sequencer. It's called a gear sequencer not because there's any clockwork and uh, wind-up key, although that would be cool, but there isn't. It's just, it's got an Arduino Nano clone and, uh, you know, electronics. Um, it's called a gear sequencer for reasons we'll get to in just a moment, but anyway. Yeah, it's a, it's a microcontroller-driven trigger sequencer. It generates rhythms, and it generates rhythms according to not um, specified, this is where I want a trigger here, here, and here, and here, but it generates rhythms according to your general description of the kind of pattern you want. And it's got four algorithms built into the software. There's the GAP algorithm, the Euclidean algorithm, the ADC algorithm, and the random algorithm, G-E-A-R, hence gear sequencer. So what's going to happen is you've got a knob here that lets you choose which algorithm you're going to use. You've got four knobs here that govern up to four parameters that control each algorithm. You've got an input for a clock here to step your sequence from one uh, state to the next, or you can step it manually with a push button. You've got another input for a reset. This just tells the sequencer, okay, wherever you are in this sequence pattern, um, when you hit that button or when you put a pulse in here, it means the next time there's a clock pulse, go back to the beginning of the sequence. And then there's two outputs. There's one output that is a pulse at the first uh, step of each time through the sequence, each time through the repetition period. Uh, you get a pulse on the period output, and you get your main output here. This is the trigger sequence that's produced. There is an OLED display up here, and this shows you what's going on. And there's four control voltage inputs, because Maybe turning these knobs is even too much work for you. Maybe you just want to let the sequencer be controlled by control voltage from elsewhere. Just plug in a control voltage and let the control voltages decide what your sequence is going to be. And you can vary the sequence as time goes on by changing the input control voltages. Let's take a look at how the module works. Okay then. Let's start looking at this thing, starting with the Euclidean algorithm. And we've got our display here that shows that we're using the Euclidean algorithm. And it shows the parameters in use. And it shows the pattern of uh, triggers that's going to be used. So the top knob here controls the repetition period of the sequence, the, the number of clock pulses before it starts repeating itself. Got that set to 16. This knob here controls the number of triggers. Got that set to 7. And we get a rhythmic pattern. You know, 
can change the number of triggers. You can change it to, say, five. if we don't want anything, <laughs> or turn it up to one, and we get one pulse per 16. This knob here doesn't do anything in Euclidean mode. This knob changes the offset, so it doesn't change the trigger pattern, it just changes where the pattern occurs. So here you can see the one pulse occurs just before the start of the period from these two LEDs. If I change the offset, now it's occurring at the start of the period. If I change the offset again, now it's occurring one clock pulse after the start of the period, and so forth and so on. I can put it in the middle, etc. So that's the offset. Okay, now let's put this back on seven triggers. Now the Euclidean algorithm gives you a particular unique pattern for any period and number of triggers. You specify those two and that specifies the pattern. The gap algorithm You also specify a period and a number of triggers, but there's a third parameter, which is the generator parameter. And if you change the generator parameter, that will give you different patterns, having the same period, same number of triggers, but a different pattern. So for instance, with a generator of one, and again, this is period 16 and number of triggers is, is, uh, is seven, we get this pattern. generator of two, generator three, okay, with a generator of four we actually get only four triggers. We can't get any more than four triggers with that combination of period and generator. But with a generator of five, we're back up to seven triggers. And here's generator six. And generator seven. Again, the last knob doesn't change the pattern, but it just changes the offset between the start of the pattern and the start of the period. So that's the gap algorithm. Now, let's go up to the random algorithm. The random algorithm, again, you specify the number of uh, the, the, the period here and the number of triggers here. This time, however, what happens is it uses a pseudo-random number sequence to generate the pattern. So, here's our seven trigger pattern with a period of 16. And I'll just repeat that generated that pattern randomly and then it'll just repeat it over and over again until you change it. This knob here is the throw parameter and the throw parameter actually doesn't change anything. I mean it 
the pattern doesn't depend on the throw parameter, but if you change the throw parameter, it'll throw a new pattern. So now we've got a different random pattern. And a different one. offset works as before. Now the last algorithm we've got here is the ADC algorithm. The ADC algorithm is a little different. For one thing, you do specify the period, but the maximum period you can specify is 10, and I'm actually going to dial it down to 8. You don't specify a number of triggers. Instead, this is used to dial in a parameter that's anywhere between 0 and 1,023. <clears throat> and what happens is the microcontroller gets the binary value, uh, the binary representation of that parameter. And that's a bunch of ones and zeros. And that's just what it uses for the, uh, for the trigger pattern. It takes, in this case, the first eight bits of whatever value I've dialed in here, and that's the trigger pattern. So if I got this all the way down at zero, well, the binary number is all zeros, no one bits, so we, you get nothing. Turn it up a little, we get uh, a couple bits at the end. Turn it way up, you get Lots of triggers, and in between you get some some other pattern. If you're if you're careful about it, you can try to dial in a particular pattern. Let's see if I can get four and four. There we go. Okay, this knob doesn't do anything in the ADC. Algorithm and this knob again is the offset. Okay, now we've got control voltage inputs here. So instead of wearing out my fingers playing with that knob, I can just plug in a control voltage. And this is just a square wave, it's coming from this LFO. And you can see that the, or hear that the trigger pattern changes when that LFO is off versus when it's on. This switch turns off the display. Under some circumstances, it might be that the updating the display might slow down processing of the sequence. So you do have this option. It also, you know, if, if this thing is distracting you, especially if you've got a rapid control voltage, it's just changing these things all over and you don't want to be bothered with all the flashing lights, you can turn that off. And, uh, and you can also step Reset manually with that button. This reset uh, sends you back to the start of the sequence, uh, regardless of whatever step you're on. Um, give it a reset pulse, and the next clock pulse it'll go back to the start of the sequence. Anyway, that's how it works. Anyway, that is the gear sequencer in Cosmo format. If you're interested in building one. There's uh, a link below to the GitHub repository where you find the schematics and the uh, design documents, the Gerber files, the software, uh, and uh, other documentation and information for you to uh, 
go ahead make your own make your own modification maybe even add a new algorithm there's there's some room in the uh, memory space and uh, and yeah you could if you can come up with yet another algorithm for generating trigger sequences go for it um, perfectly possible and I'd be very interested in hearing about it if you do otherwise meantime hit the like and subscribe buttons stay tuned and I'll see you next time on Analog Output